Hi, this is your host Abdul Bharatiya and welcome to another episode of TFR Let's Talk. Today we have with us Eric Schwaki, Director of Cyber Security Strategy at Salt Security. Eric, it's great to have you on the show. Thanks for having me. Uh, it's great to meet you. It's, I think, the first time we stopped, spoken. So. Yeah, it's my pleasure to talk to you as well. Uh, you folks made some announcement at RSA conference. How was the conference? Were you there? Yeah, I was. It was, it was good. Um, you know, it's a busy time for everybody involved, as you know. Um, and AI was huge, uh, as probably expected. Uh, APIs were actually pretty huge. API security was pretty huge. So it was a good one for us. We, had, we met with a lot of uh, customers and prospects, and so it was a great time. And if I'm not wrong, I'm pretty sure that you attend regularly. What, what was different this year? Different in sense of, I mean, security has been maturing. It's no longer an afterthought. It's no longer some of the spell. I mean, I talked to security. I mean, security has a very strong focus here at TFR as well. But when you saw hey, some contrasts or you like some trends are going in the same direction that you have been seeing for ages. Yeah, like I said, I think there's quite a bit of concern. I mean, AI has been around for a few years now, I guess, but I think there's been quite a, there was quite a bit of concern at the conference about how AI could be a problem as far as what kind of AI threats there might be on the horizon. But also, of course, on the flip side of that were, were vendors like us and others that were saying, well, we've got AI as well to help solve some of those problems, uh, perhaps make it easier for your security teams to deal with those problems. So that was, I think, a big sort of theme. Um, we were seeing more um, as well, I think, where uh, customers were, there was, like I said, there was, there was a lot of talk about API security. I think when uh, customers are looking more into that because they're understanding that APIs are a critical part of their application development. I mean, APIs are basically the, 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 the lifeblood of an application. So they're trying to figure out, okay, these APIs are seeing all this information. What are we going to do to really sort of secure these things? So I think there's more of that this year as well. When it comes to API security and you folks, you do your own reports, your own studies, uh, you keep coming up with a lot of insights there. How have you seen API security evolve from the last RSA conference to this RSA conference. Yeah, and I think it's a sort of an evolution of where the customers are at. I mean, you know, I don't, I've been here at Salt for, I guess it's coming on six months. I've been in security 20 years, um, but this is my first sort of foray in API security. And we're seeing customers that are more um, looking towards what are they going to do to actually secure APIs. There have been a lot of customers in the, in the past that were trying to just understand what their API ecosystem look like to get their hands around that. And I think we still have a lot of customers in that phase of, I just don't even know what this problem is. I don't even have a handle on, a, on APIs in general, you know, let alone securing them. But we're seeing more customers understand that, hey, I need to know my full API ecosystem, and then I can start apply, applying security to that. So there's this been the shift of just understanding what the API, API ecosystem looks like to then now securing it with, with purpose-built tools to do that. Did you folks make any announcement at this conference, which is also kind of in line with the discussion we are having, the problem that the ecosystem is facing and the salt is solving those problems? Yeah, our big announcement this, this go around at RSA was in regards to sort of our AI-infused platform, right? So salt security has been doing API security for a number of years. AI has been sort of a lifeblood. It's sort of what we have a patent on it. That's sort of how the company was founded was on this uh, um, patented AI technology for the behavioral threat side, so the security side, but we came out and said, hey, we have AI sort of infused throughout the entire platform for our, for our customers that are using it. And that's sort of that big announcement we had this, this year. AI has been around, but it kind of nobody used to talk about it, but now we have started talking a lot about AI. Uh, from the AI that security vendors have been using for a while versus Gen AI, LLMs, how much is that making into real products versus still a buzzword? to write articles around or make, you know, you know, hypothetical images. Yeah, I mean, I think we're seeing, you know, because the way Gen AI can be used to rapidly develop code, we're seeing it quite a bit. I mean, there's there's actually a demo our co-founder Roy does on on this where he shows within, you know, five minutes, he can go and have JetGPT write him an API that pulls in customer information and loads into MongoDB, right? And within five minutes, it does this. It provides all these steps on how to do it. So it becomes a, a tool that organizations can use to rapidly um, enhance their development life cycles. Um, and so I think we're seeing a lot more than we used to. I, I, before, of course, it was just like, eh, it's something that's there. We might use it or we might not use it. But as organizations see the the scale that it can help them get to, I think we're going to see it more and more uh, used within within the development life cycles for sure. 
Um, and that's, it, that's can be a challenge because it, it becomes, uh, it's one of those things that's like, great, it can develop all this stuff really fast, but is it creating secure code? Do you know where these things that are being created are being re- are housed? Do they align to different policies you might have as an organization? So it, it's nice because it makes it fast, but it can also in, 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 incur some challenge and risk. And when it comes to usage of AI, almost every company is using AI, but in terms of security vendors, it becomes even more interesting because you folks, you, you do, of course, automation is there, but a lot of insights, uh, a lot of additional information that is needed, uh, those decisions are made. Can you go a bit deeper in terms of this discussion, this announcement, to just explain even more that how is SALT leveraging AI, especially for API lifecycle? So I think it fits into sort of three major buckets that we talk about with our AI. Um, the first one would be on our enhanced API discovery. As I said, Gen AI is out there. It's creating all these new APIs. They might not apply to sort of corporate standards or, or whatever else. They might be undocumented. So our AI can go out there and do a sort of continuous discovery based on all the information we know about what APIs are, where they might reside, all these different things. And within an, an organization, find all these APIs whether they're undocumented, whether they're embedded in microservices, other places, and our AI can very rapidly show you, hey, here's what your API ecosystem looks like. And it's a continuous process, of course. We're not going to just do it once and say, here's what it is, because we know it's going to change rapidly over time. So our discovery engine and the AI as part of it is always going to be uh, discovering these uh, these APIs for that organization. The next uh, big part of it is on the posture governance side. So we think from a risk reduction perspective, it's critical to have uh, posture governance in play in regards to your APIs. And so we're sort of first to market with our posture governance uh, strategy that we released uh, back a few months ago. But now we have this AI that's also part of this posture governance uh, engine, if, if you if you want to call it that way, that allows us to make sure that once APIs have been discovered through the AI mechanisms, we can then apply posture assurance rules to those APIs we've discovered. And any deviations from what is considered best practices within an organization, we can rapidly find those and say, hey, this thing is outside of compliance or, or whatever best practices you have, and we need, to, we need to flag that. And then thirdly would be the API on the behavioral threat side. So we, like I said, we've had AI as part of behavioral threat for quite some time, where it allows us to go and look across our corpus of data, which have a massive, of course, data set from the many years we've been in this business of what APIs look like, what known attack patterns of APIs look like. Um, but we can use our AI to then find things that are, you know, and obviously we do this in real time, uh, that allow us to find things that are just sort of suspicious or anomalous in, in, in behavior and, and flag those for security teams, uh, find zero day exploits, uh, and that kind of stuff. So it really helps us really rapidly find uh, threats that may be uh, coming into an organization. We, of course, AI helps us power all that. There would be it'd be nearly impossible to go to go through the vast amount of data that is coming in through APIs to to do this manually. So we use AI very, very um, judiciously in this process to sort of bubble those threats up to the service. Um, and it's what we what we allow allows us to do that. And the nice thing is because it's platform based, we've we've come up with a, a moniker for our AI. We call we call it Pepper. Uh, aligns well with Salt. It aligns well with other uh, AI, you know, <laughs> Pepper that's out there in the in the pop culture uh, nomenclature. But it aligns well, and that's sort of what we we have throughout the the system. The other really sort of interesting one that I, I want to highlight uh, on the threat side, if you'd let me uh, for a second, is we have. Um, you know, obviously with AI, we show all these threat indicators. We show what, what might be out there that is causing, could cause harm. We now are going to have a way in the, in the platform itself to using, you know, human language to show a security operator exactly what this threat was trying to do and potentially some mitigation mechanisms for this particular threat. So rather than having to go through and sort of be a, an expert on API security when they read through and do threat hunting with, our, with, with what AI found, it's going to use sort of natural language to say, hey, we found X, Y, and Z. We think it's doing X, Y, and Z. You should probably make these, make these changes to either firewall policies or whatever it is, uh, but we'll show them very quickly what, they should, what steps they should take to mitigate that threat. What does this announcement mean for SALT customers? What they have to change in their workflow, in their pipelines to leverage that, or 
they don't have to really worry about it. They can start using this and how they can access these features and functionalities. Yeah, I mean, the nice thing is that a lot of this is sort of stuff we're, we're in, in introducing behind the covers that's just going to make the product better for them, right? If you're, if you're a customer of Salt, there's nothing else necessarily you need to do. You're going to have this new AI capabilities built in across the platform. Um, like I said, with that LLM insights where the, the security teams can now go in here and see exactly what kind of, uh, you know, ex, you know, in human language, what, what they should do with a particular API threat, that'll make their jobs easier. Rather than having to go through, we would show them all the visibility of a particular threat before and provide some insights into what that meant. But this will show them like, you know, here's a block of a paragraph of text that shows you exactly what this what this issue might be and how to how to resolve for that. So I think it'll make that job much easier. The other fun one we did, it's not necessarily, you know, amazing, but it, it does help, you know, the daily day to day operation of, of our product is with Pepper. We have our KB where you can actually type in a, a natural language question and say, uh, you know, how do I add a user to my salt platform? And rather than going to the KB article that to tells you all this and, you know, a, a huge KB article, it actually is going to show you very quickly, step by step, how to create that user or whatever you're trying to do. Right. So we've incorporated it in other ways to make the actual day to day usage of the platform that that much easier for our customers as well. When we talk about security, it is, of course, critical for business continuity. We can have a lot of analogies with automobiles. You need to have brakes or airbags, you know, like planes should have pressure. But is it more or less like, you know, uh, damage control or, you know, from things going bad or you also, or things going bad, or you also feel that there is a direct business benefit or of having, you know, very good security posture. I mean, things have improved in a couple of years, so we don't really have to tell. The, the thing is that number one is that everybody wants security, but how, what do we do about it? Number two can be security can be seen by teams as something that will slow them down. It could be a cost center. Uh, it can also be seen as, you know, you are kind of crippling innovation because there are so many gates and guardrails. I talk to a lot of folks and in modern times, you know, as we discussed earlier, the security is no longer an afterthought, but having right security posture, having those guardrails actually enable developers to freely innovate because you have that secure playground. You don't really have to worry about something may go wrong and it will the feature will not make into the final product. So can you talk about this aspect of security, which is not the gloomy, dark one, but actually a good one to make teams more efficient to, to, to show the business value? Yeah, for sure. And I think that that goes back to the posture governance that I said, where you know, you can move that down the life cycle of API development and say, hey, we've developed these standards across our organization. We can use SALT's posture governance engine to help you develop. And even before you're developing, like on the design side of APIs or, or applications, we can use the intelligence that comes from the SALT platform to help you make sure that, yeah, when I'm developing this code, it's going to align to these 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 you know, internal metrics, they're going to make sure that, hey, once we get it to the deployment phase, it actually is going to be great. We're not going to, maybe it'll cut down on some of the testing because if you've already developed it with security in mind based on these posture governance rules that we can supply, it allows them to really help, you know, that, that, that development phase and that testing phase maybe shorten that considerably. Uh, the other thing that's really important for, from a SALT perspective is our, our ecosystem enrichment. Right. It's so we understand that folks are going to use DAS tools, you know, they're going to use all kinds of other tools. And if we can enrich those tools to bring in posture governance capabilities or whatever else, it makes those tools that much more effective as well. And so that's one of the things that we talk about. And, you know, you don't necessarily need to go fully headless with with Salt Platform. But if you wanted to, you could just say, hey, Salt's going to be there running and doing its information, gathering its intelligence, creating posture governance rules, and then feeding into the existing lifecycle you already have for API development, making it more secure, but also making it more rapidly, uh, you know, more making that transition more rapid. Because um, again, developers aren't going to have to worry, oh no, do I got to check this code specifically for whatever this posture is? It's going to be built into the flow and that, that they don't have to do that on their own. Um, so it should make it a, an easier process for them. What are some of the either new or the biggest risk threats that you are seeing with this growing adoption and the scale of API? We can also look at the geopolitical conflict going on in the world is there's already you know um, 
I don't want to name any country, but you know, in Asia also, in Europe also, Middle East, a lot of things are happening, which is also creating headaches for cybersecurity teams as well. Are you seeing any different or are you seeing those security threats are what you would normally expect from the from the market? I mean, I think geopolitically, you know, you're always going to see that, right? Regardless of what's happening, even if there's not some major conflict, there's always going to be this tit for tat trying to figure out what can we what can we do as a country to to, to steal data. So I think that's a continuing thing. It'll always be a major challenge. Those are obviously going to be some of the more sophisticated threats because oftentimes there's a lot of money and resources behind the folks that are writing that kind of stuff. And so we're going to continue seeing those. Um, so that's that's an always the thing that our, our threat labs team is looking at. And that's one thing to point out. We have a, a really strong threat labs uh, security team here at, at SALT that does a lot of this detailed analysis around what's coming, what are the most critical threats to look at. Um, if you look at sort of the AI side of it, we actually released, um, and I would, I would point folks to go look at this, but if you go to our blog, we have a great blog on this, but we found some critical security flaws within ChatGPT plugins, right? And so our researchers went out there and found, I think it was three or four different types of security flaws within ChatGPT plugins that could have caused all kinds of different uh, issues if a, if, a, if a user had used those or an attacker had found those and, and started to exploit those. And so we'll continue to do that research. Um, I think AI is great and all, but again, I think having humans in, in an organization like SALTS to go out there and do sort of that nitty gritty, like deep, you know, security threat research type stuff is really important. Um, and that's one of the things we're really proud of here at SALT is to have that, that, that strong team that goes out there and does that work. Of course, you may not be in the right position to talk about this yet. We will talk about it when you folks are ready with a uh, new announcement. You know, we cover SALT almost once or twice a month. But just give us a teaser, a glimpse, what else to expect from SALT this year? You know, that's one of the things that, that Roy, our co-founder, is really all about is this is this um, innovation uh, and rapid innovation. Because again, we're sort of trying to align with what's happening with APIs. And we understand sort of this API first world. So there's always going to be this strong innovation. I think one of the things we'll double down on probably throughout the, the rest of the year is how do we um, incorporate AI in more ways? How do we make the job of our security analysts or the, the DevOps or whoever easier through AI? What can we do to, to enhance that? The other thing we want to do is make sure that, you know, a lot of it's about, you know, what does your internal, internal API ecosystem look like? But obviously APIs are very external. So what can we do to help our customers understand from a very deep under, uh, level what that external attack surface from an API perspective looks like, right? So, and it's not just scanning APIs from an external perspective and looking what your external API landscape looks like. It's what does an attacker see when he looks at, you know, a, a big company's external surface? Uh, and so we use these recon tools that an actual attacker would use to bring this information into our platform to help um, customers understand very rapidly what they need to do to lock down the external side as well as the internal side of the, of the house. So you'll see definitely more on that as we go through the next year. Eric, thank you so much for taking time out today and talk about, you know, of course, uh, uh, the conference, these announcements and how it's improving customers' life and actually improving the whole ecosystem. Thanks for those great insights. And I look forward to chat with you folks again. Thank you. Yep. Thanks a lot for your time and thanks for having me.